Hello my friends, uh, Jenny Garcia here. Uh, today I'm going to paint this portrait. It's going to be in gouache. Uh, this is a 5 by 7 uh, portrait. And I'm going to do it on the watercolor paper. Paper. It's a Canson watercolor paper. It came in a little pad of 5 by 7. And um, on the line drawing, I already marked the areas of shadow and that's important because I'm going to start painting the shadows first. You can use wash to prepare yourself for an oil painting and uh, because they are similar. I'm going to explain why. Uh, here is the original photograph. I'm going to be looking at the computer uh, to start uh, the portrait. Okay. And uh, here on my palette, uh, I have the first one is uh, black, then I have ultramarine blue, uh, cyan or cayenne blue, which is similar to cerulean blue, uh, just without the green. I have permanent green, violet, uh, Van Dyke brown, burnt sienna, uh, yellow ochre. I also have a flesh tone. Um, the flesh tone that I have in the corner, it looks more dead than, a, than alive, but it's kind of cream. Then I have lemon yellow. Actually, it's primary yellow, uh, but it's also like lemon yellow. Cadmium yellow. And then I have magenta. The next one is cadmium red. White. And I have a cool gray and a warm gray in my palette and black because I it's okay to use black. Right now I'm mixing burnt sienna, a little bit of white. And I'm going to start uh, blocking in the shapes. Let me use another brush. This one gets too much water. I'm going to use the flat. When you work with gouache, the consistency of the paint matters a lot. If you put too much water, they get too liquid. Like I mentioned before, uh, I'm not using a board. I'm using a Canson watercolor paper. When you mix the paint, it's good to have a milky consistency. In other words, not too thin with water and not too thick. Now keep in mind that wash uh, dries very fast and the darks dries lighter but the light colors dries uh, much darker. So that's very important to to remember. So I'm going to continue here uh, filling out the dark areas of shadows, the stronger darks first. So I'm continue here on the eyes. Again, the areas of shadow. It's easier to put light colors on top of darks, but not all the way around. If you paint first with light colors, it's gonna be much more difficult to, to darken the color. Same as in oils. The process is almost like with oil paints. It's a matter of filling out the shapes and where you put the colors. And look that I, I'm, I'm just placing the shapes and not blending at all yet. 
And the good thing with gouache is that you can always adjust your shapes. Because the, the paint uh, reactivates when you put some water in it. So it's very forgiving, in my opinion. I must say some people find it very difficult. Maybe because it dries very quickly. But you have the advantage that it dries. I mean that you can activate it again. Now there are other type of gouache. It's called acrylic gouache or acryl gouache. Uh, those are more permanent because they're like acrylic. You can reactivate them but for about 10 to 15 minutes. Once it completely dries in about 20 minutes, it becomes permanent. So you can try that too. I have used both. I have used uh, acrylic wash and the regular wash. Uh, the ones I'm using now is a regular wash, which is like watercolor, opaque watercolor. One of the good things about using the flat brushes is that you can use the corner to have thin lines and you can use the flat area to, to have more, um, more coverage. So when you're painting, uh, pay attention to the shapes. You can always adjust them, but try to match the shapes as you see them in, in your reference. It is always a good idea if you can practice painting portraits from life, because it, it, it's going to become much easier for you when painting from a photograph. Although I must say that today with so many good cameras, the range of colors that you get are amazing. When I'm painting the portraits, I hardly match exactly the, the colors on the face. I always try to add other colors that you don't see. Uh, you know, they're not obvious, but you know, the way I paint is, I like to add different, like yellows, uh, greens on my portraits. I, I think uh, it makes them look more vivid. I don't like my paintings to look like photographs. Um, otherwise, I will just blow up a photograph and print it on a canvas. It will be the same thing. Looking at the photo here, uh, he's uh, under the sun, so his face is kind of orange, so I'm painting now areas with orange, although at the end they're not going to look that orange. Remember that this is just the undertone, like the base. Um, I forgot to to wet the paper in the beginning, I should have done that. Well, you know, it's a, a matter of preference, but it would help if you wet the paper completely. That way you can do like a wash, which I'm doing now. So as you can see, it's easier for you to to evaluate your color if you have a base color instead of the white of the paper. But it's up to you. But if you wet the paper also, your brush, to, brush strokes are going to be much easier to, to place the color on the paper because they ain't going to be absorbed. The water is going to get absorbed.
Now he looks like a ghost now. <laughs> Don't be afraid to add many colors to your portraits. I like colorful portraits and uh, that look very painterly. I don't have a patience for for those kind of portraits that some artists do with oils. Um, glazing and it takes forever. I don't have that patience. I like to see the results as, as quickly as possible. <laughs> now I'm gonna go for the the bandana. When I'm painting, I like to work on the entire painting. I don't like to paint, uh, you know, in squares like some people do. They, they do a night and they finish the eye to completion. And then they go for the next uh, eye and finish it entirely. I can work like that. I like to work on the entire painting at the same time because it helps me evaluate uh, the colors as I'm putting them and uh, I know that the proportions are going to be good and I can adjust accordingly but if I paint an eye for example to completion and then I realize that the eye is not exactly where it's supposed to be what are you going to do now you lost the entire work of that eye because you have to erase it and, and redo it. So in my opinion, it's better that you build up your portraits in stages, but at the same time, overall, the whole thing, the whole face, and sometimes even adding the background also changes the tones that you have on the face. So it, it's very important, uh, in my opinion, that you try painting everything at the same time. So start with the darks first. And once you have your darks, then you go for your midtones, etc. And then add in the lights. And that's the same way you paint uh, with oils. You start with the darks and then you go for the midtones and then the highlights and just leave the, the lightest light for the very end, which usually is going to be on the eyes and the tip of the nose. Uh, this surface uh, that I'm using now is very soft. Uh, it has uh, two sides. One is softer and the other one uh, is uh, has more texture. So what I did, I used the, the back of the paper, which is softer, like, uh, like a board. And I think it's more appropriate for gouache paintings. Although you can paint with gouache with on canvas, <clears throat> on panels and, you know, paper. Now, as you can see, um, now I'm on the neck. So I added the dark colors and now I'm adding some mid-tones. And every time when you're painting, don't freak out because many people, they worry too much at this stage because the portrait looks awful. Uh, it, some artists call it the ugly stage. And it's true, it, it is true, it's ugly right now because all your eyes are seeing are the darks, okay? but. Keep in mind that those darks are not going to stay that dark in the first place. They're going to be blended to some extent with other colors. And they're going to change as you add the other colors. 
the relationships between each colors are going to change. So the darkness of a color is relative to the colors that's next to it. It might look dark now, but once I add the other colors to the portrait, those darks are not going to look that dark anymore. And that's what you have to keep in mind. Uh, I'm mixing now some colors for the skin. I'm sorry that I'm not showing the palette right now, but I'm only using one camera. Hopefully in the future I can add another camera and uh, show you what I'm mixing. Sometimes when I'm painting, and I do that a lot, well, not sometimes, I do that a lot, is that I, I like to take the paint directly from the palette and apply it on the painting and blend on the painting itself. Um, I think I have, it's more effective for me rather than mixing a lot of paint on the palette and doing different uh, puddles of paint. I don't like that. I don't like to work like that. I like to, you know, do, I do some uh, basic mixing, but then I like to, you know, place the, the colors directly on the painting and mix there. I think the, the portrait looks more vivid and they don't look over blended. So to me, using gouache, that's why it's very similar to working with oils. Uh, first, you work with the dark first, and, and then the, the mid-tones and the lights, same as in oil portraits or any painting with oils. I have a, a mixed uh, mister bottle, the sprayer, that keep my my paints wet, my palette, they dry very quickly. Also under where I have the different colors from the tubes, I have underneath a piece of um, sponge, which is wet. And on top of the sponge, I have paper towel, which is also wet. And on top of that, is where I, I place all the different colors on the palette to keep them wet. But the one that is constantly getting dry are the mixes. But I can reactivate them at any time by just adding water. Give it a try. Try painting with gouache like I'm doing here. And you're going to see that when you paint with oil, it's going to be much easier. Because that way you are, you are figuring out all the colors that you're going to use on a painting. Let's say you're going to do a portrait on, on a big canvas. By doing these uh, studies, uh, you know, on a 5 by 7 size in gouache, you are working out the problems and uh, you won't have them when you go and paint with the oils or with acrylics, any painting. And uh, you then can use that gouache painting as a reference for your big oil painting or acry acrylic painting. But you already resolved the problems in that little painting. So you are ahead, one step ahead. So as you can see now that I'm adding all the other colors, the skin colors, you notice that the darks now are not looking that dark anymore. Now don't freak out because I'm putting blue here. I, let's, I told you before, before, 
I like to add different colors on the face. If you need to lighten a color and, and you already place it on the paper, uh, you can just use some water on your brush and, and blend it a little bit and it will dis disperse the paint. And you can even lift it also. If you want to lift paint, lift up paint, all you have to do is wet the brush, brush the paint, clean it, clean the brush again, and then go back. And the brush is going to start absorbing all that excess paint and water. So like, like I told you before, you can see I'm adding a lot of blue. which are not necessarily on the photograph. So I'm mixing more skin tones. And the thing with gouache is that it's opaque. So if I le uh, let the blue tone dry, and I place the skin tone on top, it will be covering the blue. But right now I placed some of the skin tones without letting the blue dry. So it's gonna get mixed. The paintings that I'm using are the brand are Lucas gouache. I like Lucas paint. I have their oil sets also and they dry really quick, the oils. And they're buttery. The oil paints from Lucas, uh, the art is great. They dry in 24 hours. And if I use liquid also, it will dry in a few hours. So you don't have to wait that much for your oil painting to dry just to, to do another layer on your painting. Like I said, I hate waiting a long time for paintings to dry, so I try to use the paints that dries quickly. That's why I don't do glazing. <laughs> so as you can see, it's, it's a matter of building up the, the painting little by little, placing different tiles of paint, or shapes of paint. And that's what gives the three-dimensionality to the face. I'm constantly uh, cleaning my brush. You don't want to use uh, one brush that is dirty on another portion of your painting because it's going to pick up the painting underneath and then you're going to end up with mud. Take your time when you're working on a portrait. Don't get desperate on, on trying to get a... Don't try to get the likeness too soon. Because that's where you're going to end up with a flat face. You want to build those shapes little by little and if you concentrate on those shapes, the tone and the shape, regardless of the color, you're going to achieve a likeness. As simple as that. So I can take this painting and 
use uh, different many many colors and still I'm gonna achieve a likeness if I have the right shapes and the tones the tonality of the colors regardless of what color I'm using that's why you see paintings from other artists that it's kind of an abstract but still you when you see the painting you see the face and that's because they did the the right shapes and the right tones A lot of people get confused when they hear about cool tones, warm tones, and, uh, you know, instead of calling it, okay, the colors that are, uh, that are uh, warm are the ones that are yellow, orange, and the reds. And the cool tones are considered from the green to the violet, green, blue, and violet. But you can have a red, and next to that red, you can have, let's say, a, a very bright orange. So then you have to evaluate which one is warmer because both are warm but there is one of them that is going to be warmer than the other one which means is that the other one is going to be like a cool red or a cool orange and so some people get confused with that Yeah, I'm using this brush, but I'm having a hard time because it's so thin. The tip at the end is very thin since it's a watercolor brush. And when I go and place the, I use the the tip on the painting. I I don't even see the hairs. I end up putting the brush in the wrong spot. <laughs> You're going to find out that when you're using gouache, you're going to use a lot of white. Because uh, if you use the other colors straight from the tube, they're going to be too intense. Some people use, instead of the regular white, they use casein. The casein is permanent. Now he looks funny because he doesn't have any eyebrows yet. Right now I'm fighting with the brush. I'm gonna change brushes. So when you're painting, you have to have the right tools. Right now I was using a brush that I was fighting with. So let me try this one now. This one is much better because it's much uh, it's stiff. It's not a soft as the other one. This one is for acrylics. This brush. The other one was for watercolor. I'm gonna let that area dry. If you work too much an area, you're gonna start making a mess. You have to let it dry and then come back and fix it. And you're gonna find out that about gouache, when you work with gouache. 
again same as with oils when you paint something don't start you know trying to get the shape right with the brush over and over and over just let it sit for a little while uh, about 15 minutes and the oil paint will kind of get sticky only then you will be able to to put more paint on the same as with gouache if I keep working the area over and over you know I won't be able to to shape it right because it's too wet but if I let that layer dry then I can go back on top and do the details and reshape the area and fix it. Right now the eyes are very dark, but then I'm gonna put some light color because his eyes are kind of hazel, light brown. But I'm putting the darks first and then on top I will put the lighter color. Now what I'm doing now is mixing some skin colors in different shades or darkness, tones. <laughs> so now I'm painting more uh, mid-tones. I forgot that area of the chic. I assure you that if you try to do a portrait following these steps as I'm showing you here, you're going to have a good likeness. I'm doing the something, you know, portion of the beard now because I, I think it's vital for me to have it now and see the shape of his chin and without that beard it's going to be difficult to do the other shapes I'm not drawing every single hair But what I, I want to accomplish right now is just to add some shadow where the hair goes.
Now I think it's time to add the hair. Before I complete the face. And you're going to noti notice when you're painting that when you look at your portrait, the same portrait is going to tell you what it needs. Uh, right now, I cannot work more on the face until I have the hair. At least, you know, basic shapes of the hair. And the eyebrows. If I don't have that in place, then it's going to be difficult for me to continue building the tones and the shapes on the face. So that's why, to me, it's better to work the entire portrait at the same time. Keep in mind that there's always going to be a time when your portrait is going to look bad. But I just, you can see the progress of this painting. He looks better now than before, than what I started. And you can start seeing the lightness of the person you're painting. But if you give up on the early stages just because it looks ugly or get frustrated, then you're never going to see the portrait, the, the lightness of the person. So when I'm painting the portrait, I'm not looking at the overall face. I'm just looking at those little shapes, the tones, and how dark, you know, how dark or light they are in relation to the, the shape that is next to it. And once you concentrate on those shapes, the lightness is going to appear by itself. So don't worry too much about what color you are grabbing. Just concentrate on those shapes and the tone, the value of the color, whatever color you're, you pick. That's what matters. Because one color is going to change relative to the color that is next to it. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that I have heard a lot many artists that they said the purists they say don't use black don't use black but many of the blacks that are so it's a mixture of colors so they say that they make their own black by mixing for example ultramarine blue and uh and red to make it darker or green but blacks are made of the same colors that you're using so to me it doesn't matter the only thing I wouldn't do is to use the black straight out of the tube on its own I always mix the black with some other color like red or blue and you're gonna notice that on his hair on the top I use black but I also mix it with blue and that makes a lot of difference if I just use the black on top of the on the hair it's gonna be too strong but if you mix it with another color then it is it's gonna look good and you're gonna see it in a few minutes when I finish the hair so it's okay to use black.
In painting, there's no right or wrong. As long as you accomplish what you want to do and the look that you want to, to give your painting, who cares what colors you use and how you did it? As long as you accomplish what you were after. So don't let anybody, you know, tell you, okay, you have to do this this way or do that that way. Do whatever works for you and for whatever painting you are doing at, at the time. I not always paint the same way. It depends on what I'm painting and how I feel about the whatever I'm painting. But I have some general rules that I have followed for myself because it works for me. Like for example, in adding all the these colors, for example, right now I'm painting uh, this kind of skin tone on top of the, the head and that's because I have to put hair on top and you should be able to see a little bit of his skin. So right now I'm letting the hair dry so that I can go back and enter the, the right tones that I want. The bluish tone that I want for the hair. So that's why you see me jumping from one place to the next on a painting. And, and it's because I'm letting some areas dry while I work on the others. And oil painting is the same thing. That's why you see artists jumping from one place to another. And also if you have a color on your brush that you can use somewhere else, why not go ahead and put it? where it goes now that you have it on your brush. <clears throat> he has some kind of earrings, weird shaped earrings. But as you can see now, it looks more like the photograph, the person. Little by little, I'm accomplishing the lightness. And still, I haven't even touched the mouth yet. I just put a little um, a wash and that's it. I haven't really worked on it. I haven't really added his mustache. He's missing another ear. But still, now it's coming together. I hope you're enjoying this uh, process, watching this process. Uh, let me know your opinion, what you like me to paint and show you if you want a technique, to learn a specific technique. And I will be happy to create a video and, and show you that technique. So give it a try because uh, anyone can paint a portrait. It's just that many people are too scared that they're not going to accomplish the likeness. But in my opinion, anyone can paint a portrait. I remember one day that I told my son to, to draw a portrait. And he said, no, I can't draw. I don't know how to draw. 
So what I did, I I had the, the reference drawing. I gave it to him upside down and I told him, here, just follow these shapes and draw what you see. And when he finishes, I told him, now put it straight up. And he was surprised that it was so accurate and he accomplished the likeness and the portrait it was perfect. But the thing is that drawing upside down, your mind is not thinking about what you're drawing. He was just concentrating on putting this line here, this line over there, and not in getting any likeness or he didn't even knew what he was drawing because it was upside down. And uh, to his surprise, he, you know, I proved him that he could draw and that anyone can draw. It doesn't matter. Anyone is able to draw. But we're the one who put uh, those walls in front of us that, you know, make you fear and not accomplish what you want to accomplish. Right now he has like a, a an earring on the top also. It's like a diamond or something. Sometimes you see that I place the the tone or the color too dark but then I go over with the color I want and make it lighter because like I said before I, I like to mix on the painting itself more than on the palette itself so you can see that now the ear is lighter not as dark as I painted it originally Okay, now for the the other ear, and I haven't even touched the background yet. But now, all of a sudden, now the portrait doesn't look as dark as before. You're painting a portrait, you have to be patient. More, even more than when painting any other subject. Because we, when we're painting a portrait, normally we are stressed out. Because, you know, we, in our mind, in the back of our mind, you know, it's telling us you need to accomplish a likeness. What if it doesn't look like the person? And that in itself can stress you out. So the key to painting portraits is just to take it little by little, slowly, and, you know, concentrate on, like I said, on the shapes. If you need to blend, look at how I'm blending now. After I have put the, the colors, I may grab a, a different color and blend it into it.
I felt that I needed to darken the, the neck. To create that division for the area under the chin and his neck. Because all that area on the neck is in shadow. Even he's been hit by the sun, by the light, the neck is always going to be in shadow. So it has to be darker than, than the sheen and, you know, the face itself. Always think about where your lights are. Where is it coming from? And that way you know what to, to put in shadows, where to draw your shadows. You can see that these colors are very intense. I have to use a lot of white. I'm not afraid to add these uh, dark colors because I know that I can cover them. And if I put a light wash on top, they're going to get lighter. They're not going to get muddy. Remember what I told you in the beginning, that the darks, they dry, they dry up lighter. So it's the opposite. The light colors are going to dry darker. But the dark ones are going to light and dry lighter. <laughs> now I got confused. So the neck, as dark as it looks now, once it dries, it's not going to be that dark. So keep that in mind when using wash. In acrylics, for example, everything dries darker a little bit. If you're using a good quality acrylics, you won't see that much difference. I use uh, Atelier acrylics, interactive acrylics. And uh, I have done many paintings and I can tell if the paint got darker, there's not much difference. And that's what I like about them. And also that I can reactivate those acrylics forever. I have many days before they dry completely. They will dry to the touch, but I can put water and reactivate those acrylics. So it would be pretty much like this wash. So the paints that you get are important. I know that sometimes you try to buy the cheapest things around just to try them, but believe me, what you're doing is you're going to have problems because you're going to have trouble controlling the paint. They're not going to perform like the artist quality paint. They're not going to cover as much. You end up using more paint. And you're going to be frustrated with those pains. And it's not that you're doing anything wrong. You're painting right, but you're fighting the paint. And that's what you need to avoid by getting a good quality paint, good quality brushes, good quality support 
don't get the cheapest paper you can find because you're gonna have problems. If you're gonna do a watercolor, for example, and you buy the, the cheapest watercolor in the planet, you're gonna be fighting with those watercolors and the water. It's not gonna behave well. Another media that I love to work with is pastels. Pastels was my first love. <laughs> I really enjoy pastels. It's very messy, but still it's very forgiving and it's like drawing with color, which I like. And now that I'm using pan pastel, even better. Soon I'm going to do another painting with pastels. The only medium that I don't use that much is watercolor. I have painted in watercolors, but uh, you know, I'm not too fond of watercolors because in watercolors you you have to work in many layers gradually. And like I said, I don't like glazing, so that's why I don't like watercolor either that much because it's like painting the same picture over and over and over many times. And I don't have the patience for that. I like to see results. I like to see my, my painting emerging from, from that paper or that canvas really quick. I think one of the areas that one of the areas that I I feel that are more difficult in a portrait to me is the mouth and sometimes the nose noses <laughs> but more the mouth for some reason you might find it easy
the palette I'm using is a butcher tray which it works really well with gouache I have tried on paper one of those palette paper palettes and I didn't like them plastic doesn't work either but the butcher tray is really good for gouache, for gouache. Right now I have to stop on the mouth for a little while until it dries because right now it's too wet and if I continue working on it, it's going to mess it around. It's going to be messed up. So now I'm going to rinse the darks on the expression lines. So it's time now to revisit the eyes too. Now this painting that I'm doing, I'll, I'll finish it in, in one sitting in a couple of hours. In oils, yeah, I might finish it too. But uh, I may, may or may not need another second sitting. It depends on how much detail you want to put into a painting. But with the gouache, I cannot work and rework and rework forever because I will be reactivating the paint every time. But with oils, you can let it dry and and paint on top of it if you want. But I always try to paint as much as I can in a single sitting. Let me know in the future if you don't want to see such a long videos, I will speed them up. So I will do, you know, whatever you request from me.
This is what I like about brush. That you can just paint on top without problem. And if the area is dry, you can cover up and fix it. Right now I'm trying to make a very light color. But the, the colors are strong, so I have to use a lot of white. I think I'm going to put some yellow on his head, the forehead. This is what I like about painting, at least what I like about this style of painting. And is that you can see the different colors. It's not one blended skin. You can see brush strokes. That's what I like in portraits. At least my portraits. <laughs> I like that when people see the portrait, I like them to see the, the brush strokes that I, you know, and all the colors that I put into it. All the mixes, unblended colors that I place next to each other. That's what makes a portrait dynamic, in my opinion. Yeah, my brush was too wet, and when I went to place the color, it just covered the whole nostril. <laughs> but as you could see, I just used paper towel and, and lift it up. Yeah, what I'm doing now is just uh, correcting the shape of the nose. It's been a while since I don't work on the nose. But I think it's now time to, to fix its shape.
when you're painting a portrait, one of the features that you really need to get right are the eyes and the mouth. If you have that wrong, you're not going to have a likeness. Period. Those two needs to be accurately, painted accurately. And I could say, that I would add also the nose to those three things, especially the mouth and the eyes. But still, there's a lot of things that needs fixing. And that's the beauty about painting, it's about correcting, making corrections. Little by little you're making corrections to your painting. Looking now at the, at the portrait, I can see many things that needs to be fixing, like the eyebrows needs to be fixed. The nose that I'm fixing now, the mouth still needs to be fixed. His beard needs to be fixed especially on the, his right side, which is going to be our left side from our angle. So there are several things that needs fixing, but you go, you know, one step at a time, you start fixing all that, those features. And everything is going to start, you know, coming together. So concentrate on fixing one shape at a time. And use the, the right tonal value and the right shape. And that's it. Don't even worry about the color. Now onto the eyes, I think they need fixing. When you paint men specifically, it is good to leave the to, to paint strong lines around the eyes, the expression lines needs to be strong. But when you're painting a woman, sometimes you even skip some of the lines <laughs> because Every woman wants to look younger. If you put strong lines on a woman, they, you're going to age that woman a lot. So it, with painting women, you want to avoid putting those lines too strong. They have to be very soft and just very few, just the, the most important ones. You're not going to put every single wrinkle. But when you're painting men, it's okay. 
they need to be strong or stronger than how you paint women's wrinkles and expression lines. So to keep that in mind. I'm darkening the nostrils. I thought they were too light. Remember what I told you that dark colors, they dry lighter. And you can see it there on the nostrils. We're almost there, almost. I had to work a little bit on the background. I'm using there some uh, dark blue with a, a touch of black. Once I paint the, the background, I'm, I'll finish the hair. I don't finish the hair now because then when I put the background, I'm going to paint on top of the hair. So I have to work on the hair first. I mean on the background. The only place that I take a lot of time or uh, I paint a lot of details are on the eyes. I think that's the most important part of a portrait. If you get the eyes wrong, everything is going to look wrong. And if you paint the eyes correctly, when you stand in front of the painting, the portrait, is going to appear, it's going to give you the illusion that the portrait is actually, the, that person on the portrait is actually looking at you. And no matter where the, per, the person, the viewer, stands, 
you know, looking at the at the portrait could be sideways or in front or or right or left. The painting is still gonna look like it's looking at the at the viewer. And that's what you want to accomplish with the eyes. Right now I'm painting with the red straight from the tube on top because I want that to to be bright. Then I'm, I'll go over and add other colors, even white on top. Like I mentioned before, I like to mix right on the painting. To me it's more effective, at least for the way I work. So I'm kind of dabbing on top with different colors. I think it will give him it will give the um the headbands texture. Now I have to paint the the earrings too. I haven't done that yet. But I want to reinstate the mouth first. When you're doing the mouth, you have to accentuate or make it stronger color on the corners of the lips and right there in the middle. So pay attention to that. Those you know, in between the lips, especially the corners of the mouth. They have to be darker. That gives three-dimensionality to the lips. And then right where the two lips meet have to be dark also because it, it's having, you know, it, it has the the upper lip is giving shadow to the lower lip, so it has to be dark. Then when the lips is folding or turning the curve, that's when you see the highlight on the on the lips. So you see that I put the highlight on the lower lip and then after that, below that highlight, it starts to get darker again because it's going, it's folding and it's going away from the light. Now look what different does this make? Those little highlights on the eyes. It gives life to the portrait. And make sure you put the highlight on the same side on both eyes. Those reflections you have to put it on the same side. I love when it's time to put those highlights. I love it. Because it's like the like the aha moment. <laughs> now I'm gonna create some grays, blue grays for the for those kind of earrings he has. But first I have to do the, the background. So light blue. This is a um, ultramarine blue with a lot of water. 
kind of like to create a wash. Then I'm going to use some yellow and a lot of water on the other side. Then I'll do the earrings. So you can see how the portrait is coming along from how it was before. Now I'm going to work on the hair. Now that I have the background. And I'm going to add, uh, since it's dark hair, very dark, almost black, I'm going to put some uh, blue. So I'm going to mix the, the black and the blue. And then I'm going to paint some light tones of blue for the highlights. That way the hair doesn't look flat, a flat shape. Remember that the head is round, so the hair is going to be rounded too, unless he has a hairdo or something. But since his hair is down, it's going to be rounded too. So you have to place those highlights to give that illusion that it's rounded. I'm, I put too much white, so I'm lifting it up and then blending it together with what I have. So there's many ways of correcting things. Don't get nervous when you made a mistake like that. Just lift it up or erase it and paint over it. If you can lift it up, wait until it dries and then paint over it. Now when painting your hair, that's why I put the background first, because I wanted to paint those little hairs right on the background. That way he doesn't he's not gonna look like he's pasted on the paper. Or like a cutout. He looks part of the background too. We are almost done. I have to do the earrings. I almost forget about them. I'm going to use some grays and white. They have an odd shape. I'm not going to do any detail on the earrings because it's not important. The main attraction there is not the jewelry, but the person. So all you want to do is suggest that those are earrings. Now this earring, I have to make the surroundings darker so that it 
pops up more. Otherwise, it's gonna blend into the ear. That's why I'm darkening this area of the ear. We're almost done. Okay, I think this is it. Now, what is missing is my signature. <laughs> usually, well, usually not always. When I sign my, my paintings, I always look at something else that I need to fix. That's why sometimes it's better just to get away with the painting, sign it, and don't do anything else once you sign it. Always try to sign your portrait with the same colors you're using on the portrait. That, that way it's going to look like it belongs there. Okay. So hopefully you have liked this uh, demo and that you have enjoyed it. Let me know what you want to see uh, for the future. If you don't want the videos to be that long, let me know too. If you want pet portraits, let me know. I'm willing to do, you know, to paint whatever you want me to paint. Okay, so you see now I'm more find myself working on it. <laughs> I already signed it, I'm still working on it. <laughs> I just felt I needed to put more light there. It's kind of dark. Practice. Uh, get some gouache and, and practice. Don't For gouache, you don't have to use the artist quality unless you're going to sell, you know, a painting or something. But uh, on other media, yes, get the artist quality, but gouache, it's okay. Then try it and try to paint like that and then imagine you're doing it in, in oils and it's going to help you a lot, okay? And that's it for now. I hope that you like it and thank you so much.